think the main points I wanted to get across in this meeting was the enormous flexibility plasticity of the brain. The brain can reorganize to uh, compensate for loss, like say blindness or deafness or stroke. <laughs> But the brain can also reorganize to, um, to take care of new functions like, say, uh, night vision through, through the skin or something like that. So the brain is enormously plastic. And uh, I've been discussing some of the mechanisms of plasticity and, one of, and also some of the demonstrations of plasticity. So, for example, uh, a person who is blind can receive visual information from a camera through a tongue array and uh, not only recognize faces and whatnot, but also do such things as catch a ball rolling, which is really quite intense hand-eye coordination, um, demonstration of hand-eye coordination with, within the first session of training. Now, what I find most amazing <coughs> is that so little information is needed to make something very practical. For example, if a blind person walks into a room with a long cane and is moving a cane back and forth, that person gets the impression of the spatial relationships in the, the room and also um, the structure, where the chairs are, where the table is, where the couch is. And it's all being done with one single point on the cane going back and forth. The same thing happens with our blind people with vision substitution, we're getting a 144-point display on the tongue, and yet they're doing very complex things like hand-eye coordination. So that when, when we hear about the complexity of the brain, how enormously complex it is, how many special relations, or special uh, uh, edge detectors and color detectors and whatnot, and how how many millions and millions of cells are firing for almost any activity, one is perplexed that the brain can compensate and produce activities and percepts with just a few points. For example, we had, um, we've been working with a leprosy patient who had no hand sensation for 20 years because of leprosy, but had sensation centrally. And we made a glove with one single sensor going to one single point each, five points across the forehead where he did have sensation. And uh, within the first couple of hours of training that glove, he reported uh, what he could do, feeling the cracks in the table and whatnot. But then he turned to me and he said, you know, doctor, the most fascinating thing for me was touching my wife. For the first time in 20 years, I could feel it when I touched my wife. So this whole sensory motor loop with minimal information produced not only this percept of touch, but also the emotional content of the touch. So I think that's the most uh, uh, most important aspect of what I've talked about here in, in, uh, in Paris, is the ability of the brain to compensate for loss and to develop the mechanism for uh, for dealing with new information, and that it can do so with, uh, the brain can reorganize on the basis of as little as 2% or less of normal system, normal tissue within a specific system. I don't say this goes for everything, but the ones we've tested it has. And uh, this is not only as far as uh, sensory, uh, sensory loss, but also motor loss people with stroke and whatnot can reorganize on the basis of very little amount of surviving tissue.